On the morning of Monday, March 7, 2011, 56-year-old Craig Avon man Hugh McGill woke up feeling rested for the week ahead. He and his 44-year-old wife Jackie had just spent a few days away in Donegal, enjoying the seaside atmosphere of Ulster's west coast. Like any other morning, Hugh came downstairs and went through his normal routine of pouring himself a coffee and opening the back door to air out the kitchen. But this was not any other morning. Hiding behind the oil tank in Mikio's backyard was a gunman who knew Mikio's routine like it was his own. So, right as Mikio opened the back door, the gunman pounced into his kitchen, shooting Mikio once in the back of the head, coffee cup in hand. His wife Jackie heard the gunfire, rushed downstairs, and was shot three times in the face as she entered the kitchen. The hired hitman fled the home, and more than six hours would pass before Hugh and Jackie's bodies were found by Jackie's son. His mom, according to news reports, was lying next to her phone when she died. The life of Hugh McGill ended like it was lived, violently. McGill was a major drug dealer with a vicious reputation. In 2010, McGill, a Catholic, paid 37,000 pounds to a Lurgan loyalist for a share of a huge marijuana haul being brought into Northern Ireland from Scotland. But it didn't take long for things to go south, and the load was intercepted by police before it arrived. McGill became furious with the Lurgan man and demanded his money back immediately, but the loyalist said no. McGill had just lost 37,000 pounds, and he was not happy about it, and in February of 2011, told the loyalist he was a dead man. Knowing McGill's propensity for violence, the loyalist contacted 44-year-old Malcolm McKeown, a local drug dealer who had been involved in murders, and happened to owe Hugh McGill a 13,000 pound drug debt himself. Malcolm McKeown was offered 10,000 pounds to kill McGill by the Lurgan Loyalist, a shooting McKeown contracted to 26-year-old associate Jim Carlisle for 5,000 pounds. Jim Carlisle, who had 170 criminal convictions, was also Hugh McGill's nephew. And for years, the two were partners in crime, selling drugs from McGill's Lagery estate base and robbing local businesses. But following a 2009 robbery, of a Lurgan GAA club, Carlisle and McGill fell out over money and would be seen threatening each other publicly in Craig Avon over the next two years. So in 2011, when Malcolm McKeown asked Carlisle to kill his uncle for 5,000 pounds, he was only too happy to oblige. The McGills were allegedly involved in the drugs trade. The court heard at the time that a death threat had been issued to Mr. McKeown over a debt. He was involved in robbery and drug dealing. Within weeks of Hugh and Jackie's murders, McKeown and Carlisle's involvement was widely known, and in March of 2012, they would be jointly charged with the murder. But by 2013, the case against them had all but collapsed as McKeown and Carlisle were cleared of all charges, a common occurrence in the complicated life of Malcolm McKeown. In the subsequent years, McKeown's gang would run loose in what is referred to as the Greater Craig Avon Area, a region in North Armagh consisting of the historic towns of Portadown and Lurgan, as well as Craig Avon, a town built in 1965 to connect the two. Malcolm McKeown was a career criminal whose brothers were convicted murderers for the Loyalist Volunteer Force, a fanatical Portadown-based UVF breakaway that terrorized the region throughout the 1990s, indiscriminately killing Catholic civilians while selling drugs to Protestant ones. While his name carried historic weight in the region, Malcolm McKeown was not a member of any paramilitary group, and in fact survived being shot in the stomach by the LVF in 1999. But McKeown made up with the gang soon thereafter, and the LVF continued to supply McKeown with the cannabis, ecstasy, and cocaine he sold in Greater Craig Avon. Unlike other criminal godfathers who tended to get less hands-on as they got older, McKeown was someone so unpredictable that he was even hated by members of his own gang, a group of mostly young men who did his criminal bidding and often broke the unwritten rule of bringing violence to the door of police officers. Between 2015 
in 2016, the Kyones gang was behind a spate of arson attacks on cars belonging to police officers in Banbridge and Craig Avenue. Their crime, in his eyes, was trying to shut down McKeown's drug dealing network at a local hotel. Over a 10 month span, 27 year old Hugh Boyce, McKeown's second in command, set fire to 30 vehicles he thought belonged to cops and employees of the hotel who were trying to shut down their operation. In total, accumulating over 1 million pounds in property damage. Police became so fearful of the arson campaign and the victim's unwillingness to talk that they bugged a car belonging to Boyce and his 43-year-old accomplice, James Kidd. And in the summer of 2016, Boyce was recorded admitting setting fire to three cars belonging to cops and was soon arrested and charged with arson alongside James Kidd. And while both men ended up pleading guilty, they began to suspect McKeown had set them up after his dirty work was taken care of. The suspicion was all but confirmed when McKeown sent his feared enforcer, Jamie McVeigh, to Boyce's preliminary hearings. A reminder to plead guilty and keep your mouth shut. Boyce would receive two years for the attacks and James Kidd 16 months, both disavowing McKeown whose dirty methods of operation were making him a lot of enemies. Ones that were growing more incensed by his reckless behavior and McKeown's taxation of about 100 drug dealers in the greater Craig Avenue area. So in March of 2016, as McKeown's associate Jim Carlisle was picking his child up from school in Craig Avenue, he was shot four times as he sat in his car outside the gates of St. Brendan's primary. The car that fired the gunshots fled the scene as Carlisle, who was wisely wearing a bulletproof vest, was rushed to the hospital. Carlisle survived the attack and no one was charged with the attempted murder. However, rumors quickly surfaced and it became clear who was responsible. It was a young, hungry group of drug dealers and they didn't want to play by McKeown's rules. They called themselves The Firm. However, over the next couple years, the McKeown gang would continue to dominate the drug trade in Greater Craig Avenue. That is until the evening of November 14th, 2018, when McKeown and Carlisle drove a worker's van to the home of a 50-year-old Lisburn resident. When the man came out to speak with the duo, he was punched in the gut, forced into his house, and cable tied by his hands and feet before the home was ransacked. McKeown and Carlisle were captured after they crashed their van during a police pursuit. Both men were subsequently charged with aggravated burglary and denied bail. While McKeown, Carlisle, Hugh Boyce, and James Kidd were incarcerated on various gang-related charges, McKeown's 29-year-old enforcer, Jamie McVeigh, became the gang's main man on the streets of Lurgan in 2019. McVeigh, a deranged drug addict who had once shared a jail cell with Malcolm McKeown, grew up idolizing the criminal godfather, acting as his muscle against the drug dealers who refused to pay McKeown's crooked extortion demands. At 3.15 a.m. on the 2nd of January, 2019, McVeigh fired a shotgun round through the front door of a home in Banbridge, an act of intimidation ordered by McKeown from behind bars. And it was followed up months later by another attack on the 21st of May, when McVeigh fired an early morning shotgun round through the living room window of a family home in Lisburn. Despite all this, Jamie McVeigh also appeared to be trying to turn his life around. During the time of these shotgun attacks, McVeigh would relentlessly post pictures of himself with his new baby son on Facebook, making statements about a new start like, time to walk a new path. Being a dad is the most incredible thing in the world. And if that's not enough to change someone, I don't know what is. My own family is what I live for. It's what I've always dreamed of. But on June 19th, 2019, any dreams McVeigh had about turning his life around would be shattered on the order of his idol, Malcolm McKeown. This is Paul Smith, 
a 50-year-old Lisburn drug dealer. Like Jamie McVeigh, he was a new father who had endured a lifetime of mental health struggles. Smith suffered from an extreme form of anxiety called agoraphobia, making him panic for no reason and afraid to leave the house. At the time, in June 2019, Smith's family and friends estimated it had been 16 years since he left his Lisburn home. This lifestyle may have suited his drug dealing profession, but it also made him very vulnerable. On Sunday, the 15th of June, 2019, 36 year old Ryan McGarry visited Paul Smith at his Colson Avenue home to buy cocaine. However, on Wednesday the 18th, McGarry was viewed on CCTV exiting a tanning salon he owned in Lisburn, getting into his car and picking up Jamie McVeigh, telling him that money and drugs could be easily obtained at Smith's home. McGarry then drove McVeigh to Colson Avenue and pointed out where Paul Smith lived. As it turned out, Jamie McVeigh and Paul Smith had something else in common besides being new fathers. That something was Malcolm McKeown, whose influence had spread into Lisburn, where he had been trying to tax dealers like Smith. But knowing the McKeown gang did not know his exact location, Smith had boldly refused to pay McKeown's extortion demands. That is until Ryan McGarry gave Jamie McVeigh Paul Smith's address. On the morning of Thursday, June 19th, McVeigh and 32-year-old James Holmes were observed by CCTV out and about in Lisburn, with Holmes seen making shotgun firing gestures in two of the clips. Shortly thereafter, phone analysis from McVeigh shows that he was close to Smith's Colson Avenue residence before turning his phone off. What happened next bears all the hallmarks of a cold-blooded execution. McVeigh and Holmes forced their way into the home of Paul Smith, unprepared for the intrusion. Then, as Smith was cornered on his couch, Jamie McVeigh shot him once in the chest. As Smith lay there dying, McVeigh and Holmes stole 80,000 pounds worth of cocaine and cash. This was the scene after Paul Smith's body was found at his Lisburn home. He lived alone and was found by a worried female friend. The door of his home was unlocked and inside she found him slumped on his sofa, covered in blood. McVeigh Holmes and 32-year-old associate James Stewart were seen reveling in their notoriety on social media as they flashed the stolen cash and posed for pictures of them drinking Buckfast, whiskey, wine, and beer. Then, on the 23rd of June, a Lisburn couple was woken from their sleep when their dog started barking. When the man got up, he looked outside the window of his Mill Street home to find a masked man in his yard, asking him about another individual who had once lived at the property. As a second masked man carrying a shotgun came around the side of the house and fired into a bedroom window. Thankfully, neither the couple nor their nine-year-old daughter were hurt in the attack, but they were terrified and sold the home shortly thereafter. However, before they left, the woman of the house gave evidence and named Holmes and McVeigh as the masked men who threatened her partner before the shooting. Forensic evidence of the shotgun debris recovered from Paul Smith's chest forensically matched the debris found at the Mill Street shooting. And just days after the attack, McVeigh and Holmes were charged with the murder of Paul Smith and the attempted murder of the family living on Mill Street. Jamie McVeigh would plead guilty to Smith's murder and receive a life sentence with a minimum of 18 years. James Holmes would plead guilty to attempted murder for the shooting at Mill Street and receive a 13-year sentence. James Stewart, seen partying with McVeigh and Holmes on social media after killing Smith, pled guilty to firearms offenses and received a 10-year sentence. Ryan McGarry, who sold out Paul Smith and started this whole thing, pled guilty to assisting the offenders and was given 18 months. All of this thanks to Malcolm McKeown, who had once again managed to escape any kind of responsibility for the crimes he ordered while on remand. It would be his final 
criminal act. In the summer of 2019, the firm, the shadowy gang behind the attempted murder of Jim Carlisle in 2016, had been hearing from its dealers that Malcolm McKeown had sent word from jail that they were to pay him taxes for selling drugs on his territory. But the firm were nothing like the independent dealers McKeown could easily squeeze. They were organized, armed, and weren't going to be pushed around. So in the first week of August 2019, two armed members of the firm arrived at McKeown's Waringstown home. Security cameras captured the two masked gunmen as they stood in wait outside McKeown's front door. But no one arrived because McKeown was still in jail at the time, and it's likely this appearance by the firm was for the cameras more than anyone. Or maybe it was a warning not to come home. A week later, on August 12th, Malcolm McKeown was granted bail on the aggravated burglary charges from his November robbery with Jim Carlisle, who was denied bail on the same accusations. But McKeown's desire for freedom would come at a very high price. With his Waringstown address now officially made public in the high court, canceling any doubts by the firm that they got the wrong house. On Monday, August 19th, 2019, Malcolm McKeown walked into the service station less than half a mile away from his Waringstown home at approximately 7.18 p.m. The security-conscious McKeown, who lived just down the road, always parked his car at the side of the service station, a ways away from his own front door. A minute later, McKeown was seen leaving the shop and getting into his car at the side of the building around 7.19 p.m. That's when two firm gunmen appeared from behind the service station and shot into the driver's side of the car, hitting McKeown six times, killing him instantly. The man's body was found in a parked car behind the petrol station on Main Street in this quiet County Down village. He had been shot and police have launched a murder investigation. A blue Volkswagen Passat was seen leaving the service station moments later. And 10 minutes after that, the Passat was set on fire inside of Lurgan's Mournview Estate, a neighborhood where the firm had seen significant growth in recent years. 25-year-old Jake O'Brien and 24-year-old Andrew Martin, both from Lurgan, were arrested a week later and charged with the murder of Malcolm McKeown during an August 26th arraignment where it was revealed that O'Brien was already on probation. During this hearing, prosecutors theorized that the gunmen were waiting in the blue Passat behind the service station for up to 50 minutes before McKeown arrived and was ambushed minutes later. But if this is true, the gunmen would not have been able to see McKeown exiting the front door of the service station, making it far more likely McKeown's killers were tipped off by someone within his line of sight. Jake O'Brien and Andrew Martin both pled not guilty and were granted bail in the coming months. Malcolm McKeown's murder is a textbook case of someone who lived by the gun and died by it too. Given the crimes he committed and the enemies he made, it was probably inevitable that Malcolm McKeown would meet a violent end, one way or another. He was a bully said to have all the charm of a plastic bullet. A man who will be remembered by many, but missed by few.